Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today I would like to do a color and chat out of the latest and greatest uh, color by number book by Sun Life Drawing. This one is called Mystery Quest. So we have no idea what the picture is going to be, but I just thought we would start with the very first picture. I this time put cardstock behind it immediately so I uh, wouldn't forget and color on to the next page like I did in my last color and chat. <clears throat> Thankfully I caught it before I did the whole picture but I may still have possibly ruined the picture behind so yeah got the paper behind right away. So out of Sun Life drawing books I always use my Copic markers because I know exactly which Copic uh, color I need for each uh, color on the, uh, on the color palette over here. So we are going to get going right away. Um, I'm having a little bit of problem with my lighting uh, it is bright and early, so I do have to have a light on, and for some reason it was really washing out my uh, coloring book page. Uh, so I do have the light turned way down, so hopefully I will be able to see what I am doing. I don't know what the problem is, but let's get going. And I think I'm going to just look and see. We don't have any number ones, which is black. So we are going to start with number two, which is a gray color. And I will zoom you in just a tad. Okay. Um, well, maybe instead of, that's typically how I kind of like to go, is by starting, you know, with twos, go to three, go to four, but I think maybe I will be shifting the book around too much and trying to stay in camera, so maybe we will just start with what's up at the top and do it that way, do it a little bit differently than I normally do. So let's start with number 20, which is Violet. And we shall get going. I'm going to try, well, maybe let's try the uh, the bullet tip that I have on all of my Copics, which is normally the chisel tip. And, all right. So how is everybody doing? It is Monday morning. The dreaded Monday morning. <laughs> I have about an eh, hour and a half or so before Maddie comes down. Now Jaden does go back to school today. His spring break is over, but I'm going to have him anyhow because now both kids came down with, with colds. And she wants Jaden to rest. So I still will have both of them today. It's always so miserable, you know. Well, when anybody gets a cold, it's miserable. But Maddie, when she sleeps and stuff, then she has such a hard time breathing. And so I hope it's not too bad. It is April 1st, and I was trying to think of an April Fool's joke to pull on you guys. And you know what I was going to do? I was going to tell you guys <laughs> that I no longer was going to have the time to dedicate to this channel. And that I was going to be taking it down. But I thought, oh, that would just be kind of mean. <laughs> uh, although, that was the question of the day on our morning news program here. Um, that uh, I have on in the morning. <laughs> they posed the question, what was the, I don't know how they worded it, the worst or funniest or some, you know, something like that. Uh, April Fool's joke that you ever pulled 
and oh my gosh, some of the responses. I think one of the most drastic ones was uh, a gal wrote in that when she was younger, she took all of her dad's clothes, both dirty and clean, all of them, put them in her mom's trunk of the car. And so when her mom got up to leave for work, unknowingly, she took all of her husband's clothes with her. So when the dad got up and for work and you know after he showered and everything and he went to look for his clothes he had nothing and evidently somehow I don't know if she told him or what she said it was just epic that he had to go to her work to get her clothes his clothes in her pink robe <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. I think if we would have pulled that on my dad, we wouldn't have been able to sit for a week. Oh my gosh. That dad must have a good sense of humor. Unless they really did get in trouble for it and she just didn't say that point. She says it was epic. So, must not have been too bad but oh my gosh when I heard that one you know a lot of the others were your typical you know put a rubber band around the spray nozzle of the faucet and you know things like that but yeah I thought this one was pretty good <laughs> alrighty let's go to number 19 which is a pink So, have any of you guys pulled any great April Fool's Day jokes? And if so, what were they? I didn't, but the only one that I can really remember is when I was a paralegal and worked for an attorney and it was a small office. It was just him and I. And we both actually came from, we both went to school in the same town. He actually graduated with my sister. Um, so we were, you know, more friends almost than boss and employee. So we horsed around a lot and, you know. And so <laughs> shortly before April Fool's Day, it, I believe, actually, I did this on March 8th, which was my my sister's birthday, so that's why I remember it. Um, my boyfriend and I were going out to celebrate our anniversary. We had been going out, I forgot how many years at that time. Anniversary was the 11th, so we were, forgot where we were going, must have been going out to eat or something on the weekend before, so it was the 8th. Stopped at a gas station, and I was going to go in too. I think we were taking a trip somewhere to go out to eat, um, because, oh, I know what it was. At that point, we didn't have an Olive Garden in Wassa, so we were traveling a few hours to go to an Olive Garden that was in a city a few hours away. That's what it was. So we stopped at the gas station to not only get gas, but I was um, going to get a soda for on the way. And it was, the snow must have been melting a little bit. And so it was dripping off of the um, the roof, and it was a metal, one of those metal roofs, so it was coming straight down the roof. There were no eaves troughs, you know, across the bottom, so it was all dripping directly onto the ground and freezing um, because it had gotten, again, colder overnight. 
Let's do sixes up here, which is peach. So it had, yeah, it had frozen onto the ground, and they didn't have any salt out. So, you know, Klutzy Lisa, I uh, had gotten out of the car, was going towards the entrance door, the door to get in to the store. And uh, then to make it worse, the um, right by the entrance, the door to go into the store, there was a little bit of an incline. It came from the sidewalk and then the sidewalk went down a little bit to go into the door. And yeah, that was all ice. And so, of course, what did Lisa do but slipped and fell? And I broke my wrist really bad. It, I broke both, um, both the bones in here. Had to have major surgery. Had to have plates put in, screws, you name it. You can still see the scar. Um, so I had to be off work for a little bit. Um, and, uh, seeing as how I was the only other person in the office that really put a strain on him. So after my surgery, he didn't believe, my doctor didn't believe in casting <laughs> broken bones, evidently. Well, at least in this case, I guess for a wrist. So it was just a real hard splint, I guess you would call it, with a metal plate and stuff in it so you couldn't bend the wrist and it was all, you know, bandaged up and whatnot. And so I hadn't stay. I actually did not stay off work very long at all after my surgery because, yeah, he was having a hard time running the place by himself. And so I at least thought I could go in to answer phones for him. Couldn't do a lot of typing unless I did one finger typing because I could not type with my left hand at all. So that's kind of what I did for a while as I was going through physical therapy to regain strength in that hand and, you know, all that fun stuff. And after a while so that was on the 8th so almost a month later um you know i i was getting better i was doing better and so for april fools uh, and he just about had a heart attack i told him that i needed additional surgery that it was not healing well and that with that surgery, I was going to have to be off for a month. <laughs> oh my gosh, the look on his face was just... <laughs> oh, and I felt so mean. I couldn't keep up with the charade for very long. <laughs> so I told him, I said, you do realize what today is, right? And I guess he never really thought about it. And I said, it is April 1st. And he just kind of gives me this dumb look. I said, it is April Fool's Day. And it finally clicked what I was trying to tell him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But he did have to laugh. He thought it was pretty good. And I think it was just mainly because he was extremely relieved that I wasn't serious. <laughs> so, yeah, that one was pretty good. I just wish I would have been able to keep it up for a little bit longer and made him sweat a little bit longer. <laughs> I just couldn't. He was just so devastated. I couldn't do it. <sighs> Could not do it. I mean, I should have at least, you know, let him think about it for like an hour or so and then told him, but no, I just, I couldn't do it. <sighs> oh my gosh. That was funny. I don't think he thought it was funny, but so yeah, you guys pull any any good April Fool's Day jokes on your folks or your significant other or I don't think I ever really pulled a good one on Bob. He doesn't have a real good sense of humor. <laughs> He's not a very, you know, funny type of person. 
So I don't think he would have appreciated any type of uh, April Fool's joke I would have pulled on him. <laughs> oh, my. Some people do take it to the extreme, though. I have heard stories even worse than the daughter stealing her dad's clothes. <laughs> you know, of what people, the pranks people would pull. Oh, my gosh. I mean, really elaborate. Had to have been thought out for months type of things. Oh, my gosh. I would never go, I guess, to that extreme. But, you know, some people are real pranksters. And, you know, so... April 1st is probably their favorite day of the year. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, I you know, I was just like, oh, I should pull an April Fool's Day joke on you guys. But couldn't do it, couldn't do it. Because of my diverse audience, I didn't know if some of you would have taken offense by that. I know from comments from many of you that you are quite a hoot many of you are quite funny in your comments and you guys just make me laugh you know who you are <laughs> so i know you guys would have appreciated a good april fool's joke but not sure if everybody would so did not want to offend any of my subscribers Plus, do other countries, does, does like the entire world do that for April Fool's, for April 1st? What about you guys in the UK or um, Australia or, you know, any of you? Do you guys all do April Fool's Day jokes? Kind of like us crazies in America do? Anything for entertainment over here, you know. Oh, we can be easily entertained. Yeah, so. And I kind of, you know, was thinking about it yesterday because I had realized ahead of time, and this doesn't always happen. Most years I don't even think about April 1st being, you know, April Fool's Day. Today I had, or this year I had, remembered yesterday about it so yeah i was thinking of an april fool's joke to play on you guys and that's what i came up with and then when it came time to starting this recording i thought no i can't do that i just i cannot do it so i didn't all right so on to these 11s, which is yellow. And again, I typically would not have picked out this pail of a yellow as my choice of a yellow, but I did match my colors up to what is on the back cover. And their yellow is quite a pale yellow. So that's what I went with. <laughs> Like I said in uh, a previous video that I picked out colors that I thought were close that matched and then I seen those colors that were on the back and uh, I had switched out a few of what I picked out out of my Copics and proceeded to do that a number of times till I believe I am pretty close now to colors that match all 22 of their colors. And like I stated in the past, this is one thing that I love about all Sun Life drawing books is the fact that their numbering system stays the same across all of their color by number books. And you know there are a lot of them out there. Um, so yeah, number one is black in every single book, all the way up to number 22 being magenta. So I know that my Copic coloring 
uh, not chart, but my system, I guess, if you will, works for every single Sun Life drawing book that is color by number. I just seen that Sun Life Drawing released a picture on Instagram. And even though this book was just released and just prior to that was the World of Animals book that was just released, what, a couple weeks ago? They actually are having another book coming out, I believe, within the week. And I'm really excited about this one because it is going to be the same pictures as what is in the one color animal stencils. But instead of the one color, it is going to be a color by number book. So kind of similar to the one color mandala versus the color by number mandala book that they put out a while ago. And I really liked those books. I enjoy doing uh, one color pictures. As many of you know, I'm a very limited color palette person. <laughs> when I color my uh, designs and mandalas, I love to go with um, just maybe three colors, four colors. Um, so let's go to number 10, which is yellow orange. So when they came out with the one color books, I'm like, oh, yes, this is up my alley. Because, yeah, you pick out one color and you go with it. And I loved that. But then, when they came out with the color by number version of that book, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. And because I have my colors in the Copics picked out already, it was no big deal to find the colors that I needed. Whereas before, you know, I would get out the book, I would, you know, most of the time I would be coloring these with gel pens. And so I would have to, again, find some colors that would match um, to the particular colors that were in that mandala. So I think that's one reason why I really started liking the one color books or their lines and dots books where you just basically, again, pick out one color and... Uh, you color all the lines or you color all the dots with one color and it makes a picture. I really like the lines ones. I have done many of those and I believe I showed those in previous videos. Let's go back over here and do some number 10s. So yes, I am really looking forward to that new book coming out. Um, I have not been told yet. I shouldn't assume, you know, by Sun Life Drawing that I will be getting a copy for review, but I have been getting all of their books from them, which I appreciate. And then, you know, they have sponsored a number of giveaways with you guys, um, with the latest one being that World of Animals giveaway, and the winner was just drawn for that. So, with them coming out with so many books, I can foresee maybe another giveaway in the future. They are so good about that, about working with me um, very, you know, easy going. And, you know, if I would probably ask to do, you know, if I could do another giveaway, I'm sure that he would say, you know, yes, but I don't want to, you know, because we just had a giveaway. I don't want to take advantage of, 
his generosity. So we shall wait and see. There's a number 11. Wait and see what's coming down the pike from them. They have really been releasing the books lately, huh? Jeez. They've been working hard. This pen seems a little bit drier. I'm going to have to see if I have a refill for this. This is Y17. I do have a number of refills, but of course I do not have them all. <laughs> new, new. Especially the grays. I don't need refills in grays. Although I do use this uh, N3 quite a bit um, in here. And uh, so I do use the N3. May need a refill for that one. Because as your typical Amazon paper, it is quite thirsty paper. And so will suck up the ink from any marker that you use quite fast, whether it be water-based or especially alcohol-based. Um, yeah, very thirsty. It needs watering. So the second you put your pen down, the paper's like, <laughs> water. And it doesn't mind if it's alcohol either, so paper gets drunk too. Oh gosh, Lisa, stop, stop, stop. It's early in the morning, forgive me. Alrighty, I think that's all the tens that I can see up at the top. So let's go to number three. Let's see, why make sure I get these back in the same order in case, let's see, red, red, orange, yellow, orange, okay. Just in case I miss one and I have to go back <laughs> and grab the right marker. I pretty much know, you know, just by looking over here at the colors that I know which number they correspond to, but you never know. So we have number three, dark brown. Okay. Alrighty. So yeah, am I zoomed in far enough? I think so, huh? You don't have to be right up on the paper, right? <laughs> All right. One other thing I was going to chat about with you guys is I was kind of tied up the end of last week and over the weekend. Friday is typically my record a lot of videos day so that I have some kind of in my back pocket for during the next week. I did not get a single video recorded last Friday because I had a very sick pupper dog. She started throwing up on Thursday afternoon and she proceeded to keep throwing up throughout that evening into the next morning she was still throwing up because initially I just thought eh, you know it's something she ate or you know what have you and I wasn't I mean I hated to see her throwing up but I figured it was just something she was going to get over well, she threw up a number of times throughout the night when I seen she was still throwing up in the morning. I called my vet. My vet did not have any openings whatsoever, but she was concerned because of the fact that even every time Bella would try to drink water, it would come back up too. So all she was throwing up was bile, basically. You know, there was nothing else in her tummy. 
poor little girl, you know, kind, you know, just like humans when you got the flu and you're throwing up and throwing up. I know, not a, not a nice subject to talk about. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it is what it is, I guess, right? Fact of life. So, yes, this poor little thing was still throwing up in the morning. And, uh, yeah, so I did call my vet. She could not get her in. So she suggested taking her to this emergency vet, which is near Wassa. And as I agreed to that, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that sounds terribly expensive. So uh, before I called them, I called, I have a vet right, right by Marathon here. But I know that they're kind of pricey, too, and that's why I do not use them as Bella's vet. But I thought, well, you know, it's nice and close, and it may, in the long run, be cheaper than taking her to an emergency vet. So I called up there, kind of explained the situation, and... You know, they too were a little concerned. Number one, she wasn't keeping any food down. This dog had not eaten for over, well, for about two days and was not keeping any fluids down, which is, you know, more important than even the uh, fact that she wasn't eating at all. Let's go to the grays. If I remember right, these grays really bled out. So, they could not get her in either. They were totally booked. Everybody must have been taking their pets in on that Friday. And uh, they, too, suggested this emergency vet place. So, I'm like, okay. And I, I had said something about that sounds terribly expensive. And she said, not really. She says, they, it probably wouldn't be, you know, much more than if you would have brought her up here. So that made me feel a little better, and I says, do you need to call and make an appointment, or, and she says, no, they, you know, you can just walk in. So that's what I did. I got poor sick little Bella in. I put her in a cat carrier in my back seat. She's just more comfortable that way because she hates going for a car ride. She starts shaking the minute she sees me put on my coat and I come towards her because she knows that she's going along. And this poor little thing just shakes and shakes and shivers. So I believe she is more comfortable in the carrier and being enclosed like that rather than being out in the car. And it's much, much safer for her and much safer for me. So, yes, that is what I did. Got her in the carrier, the cat carrier, in the back seat. Looked up the directions to this place. Got there, got Bella out. And I proceed to go into the building, and I told the receptionist, you know, she looked at me and like, you know, can I help you? And I said, yes. I said, I have a very sick little dog. And she's like, okay. She says, are you a... She didn't say, are you a patient here? But, you know, are you a, not a customer? You know, you know what I mean. Um, and I said, no. And she says, did you call and make an appointment? And I said, no. <laughs> and she says, oh, she goes, are you looking for the emergency that and I go yeah <laughs> I did not realize there were two different places oh so she told me where to go to get to the emergency place <laughs> number five no number five is tan um so had to get poor Bella back in the car back in the cat carrier I mean oh this poor little girl and I go and I do manage to find the emergency vet I will know better next time if I ever have to do this again so we go in there 
and the gal at the front desk. Very, very nice gal. I liked her immediately. Um, you know, she just had me fill out some paperwork on Bella, and then she took Bella back while I was filling out the paperwork, and she was so good with Bella. And uh, so, yeah, they took her back. Um, I had to wait quite a while because you can imagine with it being an emergency place, you are kind of first come, first serve. And there were a few people ahead of me. I don't see any more fives, huh? So yeah, I had to wait for quite a while before they came and got me. Took me back into one of the rooms and then... Oh, peach. Mm, going the wrong way here. Um, waited for the vet to come in and talk to me. So she finally came in and we talked about what her symptoms were, you know, what was going on. And uh, she had suggested some blood work. She says that would give her a real good base starting point because I, you know, I was racking my brain trying to think if there was something that Bella could have possibly gotten into that could have made her sick. And boy, I couldn't think of anything. And that's one of the first questions she had for me. And I says, you know, I says, I babysit my two-year-old granddaughter every day. I have to keep things locked away. I said, so I really cannot think of anything that she would have gotten into. She's not in the garage by herself ever you know, to worry about any antifreeze or not that I have any of that out anyhow, but, you know, so I really couldn't think of anything. So that's when she suggested the blood work. And then what's kind of nice is they go and they get an estimate for you and they prepare that all up. So I waited while they got that together then they come in, give you the, you know, what the estimate would be. And I kind of almost fell off the chair. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Say, no, we'll go home now. So, yes, I signed the estimate. And I had to go sit back out in the waiting room again. Wait for them to draw the blood, get um, the results in. So it actually went faster than what I thought it was going to. I mean, yeah, so I was sitting there for quite a while. But um, finally, they called me back in the room, and the vet came and talked to me. She told me that the blood work all came back real good. Except for her cholesterol is a little high, and she said that's probably because she's a chubby little girl. And I says, yeah, we're working on that. <laughs> now, maybe she lost a little bit with not being able to eat, right? Horrible way to lose weight, though, even for us. So, she, you know, said she thinks it was just, you know, a viral type of thing that that she caught and so it was essentially the doggy flu i thought oh heavens <laughs> but because she was throwing up so much she did have the diarrhea on top of it they uh did say that she was extremely dehydrated and that was the thing that i was concerned about and i know that can get serious very quickly and so just for that fact alone, I am glad I took her in. I am glad I had peace of mind that it, you know, it wasn't anything to do with her kidneys or liver or, you know, other things that could be the cause of all this throwing up. So they did give her an injection of fluids under her skin um, so that she got rehydrated and it looked so funny and I'm so glad they told me what to expect because 
they injected this fluid under her skin on the back of her neck. So she had this huge lump on the back of her neck that they said, you know, can sometimes run down, I think it was the right leg, um, as this fluid gets absorbed into her system. So, yeah, I'm really glad she told me about that because I would have freaked when I got her home and noticed this huge lump on the back of her neck thinking, what did you do to my doggy? But, yeah, it was just the fluids, and it didn't take long at all to go away as her body absorbed that, all the fluids that they gave her. So, yeah, that was nice. They got her rehydrated. And I think that alone perked her up some because she seemed, you know, better when we got home already. But then they suggested a number of different meds. One was an anti-nausea medication. One was an anti diarrhea medication and then there were two things for probiotics because she said with you know being so sick for a while um, she may have lost a lot of like us humans again a lot of our good gut bacteria that we need to be healthy and absorb the nutrients in our food well and you know all that good stuff so there was a pack of two different things of probiotics uh, one was a big capsule to give her once a day and then there was this other syringe of paste it was called <laughs> and you just it has some rings on the end and you would just unscrew the rings till you got to um, two. You gave her two, I think it was milliliters or whatever at a time. And yeah, I tried giving her this stuff the first night. Did not go well at all. This paste was so thick and gooey. I tried, you know, just getting it into the side of her mouth, you know, where... You know, and back far enough where I figured she would swallow it. Oh my gosh. I mean, this stuff was thicker than peanut butter and it smelled horrible. <laughs> so she got a lot on her fur, on the side of her mouth. I did get, I think, the majority of it in her. But then I tried to wipe her fur up because, yeah, it was all stuck to the outside of her mouth there. And you know that stuff would not wash off. Oh, my heavens. And I didn't want to pull at her fur. I mean, this poor dog is sick to begin with. So I got off what I could, which wasn't much. And then I let the rest of it on there because I just, I could not get it off. So then after it had dried, this was the next day, I was able to kind of rub some of it out between my fingers and got the majority of it out so but yeah trying to get those pills down her was another nightmare oh, I'll be right back one moment alrighty I am back okay where was I yes the pills um, anybody that has had to try to give meds to their pet, whether it be a dog or a cat, knows my dilemma. <laughs> Especially when I had a dog that was not eating. Because as I looked up on Google how to give a dog medication, you know, of course, every single one came back saying, oh, the easiest way is to put it in a treat. Yeah, I kind of knew that. I have had sick pets in the past, although it was always cats, but Belle is my first dog I've had, so. 
have always had cats. Um, well, since I got divorced, anyhow. We had a dog when I was married, but anyhow. Um, so, I'm like, okay. I did find, you know, a few articles and a YouTube video on how to get a pill, you know, down your pet by holding their top part of their mouth with one hand, bottom part of their mouth with your other hand, and then popping the pill back as far as you could get it on the back of their tongue so they had no choice but to swallow it. So that's what I kind of knew from the past. So yeah, I had tried that with Bella, but yeah, it was not too successful. I did, however, get what I felt was probably the, the most important ones because they were only half pills. Um, the anti-nausea and the anti-diarrhea med. I got both of those down her, so I was happy with that. The probiotic, however, is a bigger capsule. No matter how I tried and how far back on her tongue I thought I had this thing, Nope, she would spit it back out, and by the time, you know, I didn't want to keep, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Try to keep doing this to a poor dog that is sick, you know, by prying her mouth open, and, you know, I was upsetting her, it was upsetting me. So by the time she spit it out the third time, and it was starting to, of course, get gooey, you know, the capsule itself, because of getting wet from her saliva. It's like, yep, yeah, okay, I give up. You are not getting this probiotic pill. So between having a problem getting the paste of the probiotic in her mouth and then her not taking the probiotic capsule, I'm like, alrighty. So that's when the next day I had Googled all that and yeah, didn't tell me much that I didn't already know. So that day she did not get her meds. But the that evening, I was so ecstatic. My doggy started eating and I go, Bob, she's eating. I was making, what was I making in the kitchen? And, you know, that's when I knew she was really sick was I would be in the kitchen making something and she didn't come in the kitchen. That is not like my Bella. And this time when I was making something, oh, I was making, I had made meatloaf over the weekend with cheesy hash browns. And so I had the cheese out and, you know, I was making the meatloafs and stuff so I had hamburger out and she actually came into the kitchen now she typically loves shredded cheese and cheese is nothing you know bad for them so I thought well she was looking at me so I gave her just a few little pieces of shredded mild cheddar which is what I was using for the cheesy hash browns and she ate it. <laughs> Bob, she's eating. Never thought I would be so happy to see a dog eat before. <laughs> Bob, she's eating. <laughs> he goes, yeah? Well, that's good. <laughs> I know, I'm so happy. Now, what the vet had suggested me to do was to give her a very bland diet for the next, you know, week or so while her tummy kind of got back to normal. So she said to make her some boiled chicken and then, you know, with rice and boiled hamburger and then put some rice in with it. And while I have boiled chicken in the past to cook it and then Put it in like a casserole of some sort. I have never boiled hamburger. That did not sound appetizing whatsoever, but okay. 
So, Friday night, uh, well, Bob and I had gone out to eat. We got groceries because after all this running around, I didn't want to leave Bella again to go back to Wassa and get, you know, groceries myself, which is what I typically do. So, Bob and I got groceries together then Friday night. Bought some chicken, bought some hamburger, and... So yeah, then Friday night, I proceeded to boil up a batch of chicken really well, so I knew it would be really tender, and let that cool. As that was cooling, I boiled up a pound of hamburger, and let me tell you, I don't know, have any of you boiled hamburger before? To me, it did not smell good when it was done because, of course, it didn't take long to cook like the chicken did. But did it look gross? <laughs> I uh, took it out with a slotted spoon and, you know, put it on a paper plate with paper towel on to absorb, you know, some of the liquid and any fat that, you know, kind of remained in it. Took the plate in by Bob. I says, does that not look disgusting or what? <laughs> he just looks at it like, I don't know. He loves hamburger. And I'm like, uh, to me, it looks disgusting. Uh, here is another one that's getting dry. I'm going to have to put this. This one especially is getting bad. So I am hoping I have a refill for this because I just placed an order with Blick for my Prismacolor pencils. I had a video out that I had gotten a really great deal on the 132 set, so I went through, found out which 18 were missing to make the 150 set. So I have just placed an order with Blick. So I do hope I have this refill already. Why R01? I think I may. Because I tried to get all you know, skin tone and those type of refills. Not that I have all of them, but like the E01s and E001. So anyhow, nothing like getting off the beaten track. So I proceeded then to make the rice, let all the meat cool, made the rice, let that cool, and as that was cooking and whatnot, then I was, I uh, smushed out the hamburger really well with a fork to break up any lumps. Then I shredded the chicken, cut it all up into teeny tiny pieces and mushed that with a fork. After the rice was done, I poured a little bit into the you know, some into the hamburger, some into the chicken, and mushed it all together really well so that the rice was even kind of mushed up. And tried giving her some with the chicken in. And of course, she turned her nose up at it. After all this work that I put into it. And she was at this time finally starting to eat some treats here and there. Typically when we take her out potty, if she goes, um, she usually gets a little treat and she always looks forward to those treats. And uh, yeah, so she was starting to eat a little bit. Turned her nose up at the chicken. I'm like, oh sure, spend all this time and energy into making this special food for you and you're not gonna eat it. So the next day, that was on Saturday. So yesterday I tried giving her some of the hamburger and rice thinking she would like maybe that better. Nope, turned her nose up. And you know, she still had not been eating much at all. So, I mean, this dog had gone like two days without eating 
but I knew, you know, like, again, like, like us, as long as you can keep the fluids down, you can go a while without food. And it won't, you know, be devastating. So she was at this time keeping fluids down, so I knew that that was the most important thing. But yeah, it's like I made all this special food for you. You have to eat it. But uh, she did eventually eat a little bit of the chicken and eventually a little bit of the hamburger and rice. But I still don't think she likes it that much. She has started, um, you know, just eating in general, though, a little bit more. We will, you know, hand feed her some certain little treats and stuff and she will eat that now so so she is on the mend yay there was something else i was gonna say about that though what was i gonna say i don't know i wish they would have told me how much she weighed because i'm assuming they weighed her because I know at my vet, she was like around 12 pounds, which is very, very heavy for a little toy dog. She should only be like almost half that, maybe seven to eight pounds. She's got to lose a good four pounds, if not maybe five. So I was kind of curious, and I did not think of it at the time, of course. I had other things on my mind. Um, in regard to, you know, I should have asked, you know, how much she weighed. But, again, I didn't think of it. I think before, are there any sixes down here? Because this is really getting dry. No, we just go down to here. So I think I'm going to complete the sixes. And then I definitely am putting this one on the side and making sure I have a refill. Or I may have to pay a little extra and get it off of Amazon. Because, of course, I am not paying for their standard shipping for one little item off of Blick. I had to already do that with my Prismacolor pencils because I it did not make, of course, a $35 order. Which is what you have to purchase in order to qualify for free shipping. So. Alrighty. So that was my big excursion with poor Miss Bella. And yeah, she was pretty dragged out. She had, you know, gone through hell and back on Friday. They had to shave the side of her neck a little bit and I'm assuming it was to draw the blood so they could see you know exactly where to draw the blood from so she's got a bare patch on the side of her neck side of her throat but the way her hair grows fur grows I don't know if you call it hair or fur um it'll be growing back in no time at all just like, do you call it nails or claws? <laughs> Especially for a cat. Are they nails or are they claws? I think typically Bella, I call them her nails. And my cats, I call them their claws. Probably because they use them more as claws. Even when they're just wanting to get my attention, like when Kaylee jumps up in my lap... When she insists on her loving every morning when I first get up. If I am not petting her and I am, you know, checking up on my stuff on the phone like I do in the morning. And uh, I'm not petting her. She comes up and paws me in the face, which would be fine. But when she does that, she's got her claws out. <laughs> and it hurts. <laughs> uh. It's like, I don't mind if you paw me in the face, honey, but put the claws back, will ya? Wowzers. 
Misty will do that too sometimes. It's like, okay, you guys, you are getting my attention. You don't need to have the claws out. Man. Misty, I think she uh, sharpens them like crazy so that they are like the edge of a knife. <laughs> she keeps a little sharpener hidden under my desk. Files them down at night. Yeah, okay. She's such a sassy pants, you never know. She's laying over here on the floor next to me by the heat register. <laughs> belly up and her feet are like the or her paws are just flopped over she's like she's in her glory it's like ah oh, yes this is the life she loves laying by this heat register i'll see some of the you know the other cats lay there too once in a while but yeah that is a misty's place So, how are we doing on time? Okay, not too bad. I have no idea how many parts this is going to be. I am not going to do another long color and chat like my last one was. That was the longest color and chat I have ever done. Not as long as Anne's, though. She's got me beat. Wowzers. That one that she just put out that was over four hours. <laughs> Holy cow. And it was a voiceover. So not only did she spend four hours of coloring, she spent another four hours recording the voice to voice over the video. Although it wouldn't be bad, you know, sitting and coloring. Not four hours straight, of course, but... um coloring without the sound on you can just you know color and relax you don't have to worry about things to talk about while you're coloring and I think like she does I think she actually listens to audiobooks then as she colors so I can see why she likes doing the um, voiceover videos so much I like it when she does her live ones not not live streams but when she talks as she colors I don't know why Sorry, Ann. Um, I think she's just, I don't know. Well, she's always funny. She is a hoot. She always makes me laugh. If you don't know who I'm talking about, which I am assuming almost every one of you do, Ann from A Colorful Life, Mama Fruit Bat, I know I have her to thank for sending many of you my way. So. But, yeah, she did a very long color and chat. I, I don't know. Well, I was, gonna, I was just going to say I can't imagine doing one that long, but mine was over three hours, so. And that wasn't recorded all at once either. I joined them together, so it was just one long file. Rather than splitting it up into separate videos, I just continued on with the picture. This one I am going to split up. I am not, I don't think I'm going to be doing a video that long I was running into problems again with this new software I'm using so I think it is due to the length of the videos it seems like every time I get over an hour video I have a problem so what I am trying to do now um, I'm just kind of testing this theory to see if I am correct or not every hmm, about 40 45 minutes i am stopping the recording and i am starting a new one kind of like clips and then i am just going to join them all together when i in my editing software i'll just join all of the 
little clips together and make one video out of them. So I am hoping by having these shorter clips that it's not going to have a problem saving them. Because when I talked to support, um, I had emailed them about a number of problems I was having. He kind of told me that, yes, it, you know, it should support a like two hour video, but it was not designed for that. It was designed more for, I guess, cinematographers where, or real movie makers. I mean, it has so many bells and whistles to this piece of software and that's why, or it's an app. Um, and that's why it was pricey for app store standards. Um, you know, not a fortune or anything, but let's do number 19, which is pink. Um, but he said, you know, typically what it is, you know, a lot of times what is done with this is only like a, you know, 10, 15 minute shot, you know, something like that. So that's what kind of gave me the idea that I am going to do because it, it did seem when I would make other videos if they were under an hour maybe 45 minutes I did not have a problem my long ones yeah I had problems and as a matter of fact <laughs> I tried over the weekend three times three times to do an unboxing of two diamond paintings that I got and I was really disappointed I finally gave up and I'm like nope not gonna do it again mm -mm. one of the diamond paintings is huge matter of fact I am at this time going to show you the pictures that I printed off um, that I was using for the video it is pictures of the diamond paintings and then the sizes of each and the price. Let me get those sheets quick. All right. The first one was this. This is the latest one. Let me zoom you back out a little bit. I know this probably doesn't interest some of you. <laughs> some of you that aren't into diamond painting. But this came from Huacan. And this is the latest one I won. And it is a 40 by 50, which is a very nice sized uh, diamond painting for to win for free. I mean, typically they're like, you know, 30 by 30s, you know, just real small ones. No, this is a really nice sized diamond painting. So it cost me a penny. It's a full round. It was from the Alina store. So they carry Hua Can also. And I got it in like three weeks. So... Um, I went through and unboxed that one, showed all the drills and whatnot. Then the big epic one, which is the largest diamond painting I had ordered to date, is this one. Isn't that pretty? But wait till you hear the size and the cost. Um, beautiful deer with the flowers up in the antlers and doves. Pretty bird up here. Got it from this, I don't know, Kwanzai store. It is an 80 by 100 full round. Can you imagine? But it cost me under 25 bucks for a full round 80 by 100. I could not believe it. I had seen this on another uh, person's YouTube. It was a diamond painting YouTube uh, channel, and I cannot remember the name of the channel i can't remember who i was watching at that time i got it in like three weeks so i was really afraid you know the old adage you get what you pay for um yeah i was really nervous about receiving this diamond painting so when i got it out on camera and i was let me zoom back in again and i was um unboxing it and uh, looking it over, the canvas was so clear. I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. There were some um, 
because of the way it was packaged, it was rolled around the drills. It was not on a, um, 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 styrofoam tube roller. That's it, the roller. Like I was hoping it was going to be because the box was kind of dented up. It was squished more than dented, so that wasn't so bad. So it had some, uh, some folds in it but nothing real bad i don't think it's anything it it was nothing that affected the glue on the canvas itself that was all crystal clear i mean just like glass so i was so impressed with that so then i'm like okay let's see how the drills are and with it being a round rather than a square diamond painting I wasn't as concerned. With square diamond paintings, you really have to have good drills because again, they fit right tight together, right? So sometimes you will get drills that have little tabbies sticking out the side. So I'm assuming when they're made, they must be made in like uh, some type of form and then they must be popped out and cut or something. I don't know, but Sometimes there are little tabbies that stick off of the sides of them. And, of course, you can't use them <laughs> because the, the tile next to it, the drill next to it, won't be able to fit in there and stick to the canvas. So I was worried that I had never seen round drills that had that problem. So I don't, again, I have no idea how drills are made. I wish I did. That would kind of give us an idea of why we get some the way we do in that shape and condition that they are. But these drills looked great. So I was just ecstatic. The whole thing looked really, really good. The only thing that I didn't like about it and I know some people like this, so they would have been ecstatic, is that it came with the clear plastic covering. I prefer the opaque coverings um, because I just do not like, number one, I don't like the sound of that crinkling, and I know some of you love that sound. So as I opened the packages of drills and stuff. I had an ASMR moment and I made the sound with it. And I mean, it would have been a great video. I had given some tips on working, you know, how I work with the large, large uh, diamond paintings on my drafting table and how you can figure out on the drill packs, whether it's a 666 or a 999. You know, I just, I had some tips in there. But yeah, after the third time and it still was gone, it's like, I don't know what's going on, but I am not doing this again. Even the third time when I recorded it, I did not pack them back up in the box. When it didn't, when I had problems the first time, yep, I repackaged up all the packs of drills, rolled it up, in the canvas got it back in the box because the very beginning of the video was there where I actually unwrapped unboxed the um, the diamond paintings so that part was there up to the point where I started talking about the drills for the first diamond painting the smaller one and then after that it disappeared so when I tried redoing the videos, I started from that point on. Because I thought, well, at least I have the first part, the unboxings themselves, because, you know, that's not something you can replicate. Once they're unwrapped and open, you can't really put it back on. Just like when a color on chat disappears, it's not like you can remove the ink off the paper. <laughs> That would be kind of nice if you could do that, but. So yeah, I was not happy. So I wasted, you know, not only could I 
not record all day on Friday because of little Bella. I wasted I don't know how many hours on trying to get that diamond painting unboxing done. And yep, I had to give up on it. I don't know if it was just something about those diamond paintings. They were shy and didn't want to be shown. <laughs> that they were just saying, no, we're, we're going to jinx that video. And she is not going to be able to show it. We'll let her show the box itself. But no, you're not spilling our guts out on camera. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I did not get many videos made this weekend at all. And those that I did get made yesterday were ones that I wanted to get out yesterday. So they were, you know, I got four of them done, I think, yesterday. And none of them were long. I wanted to get out my March coloring book haul because it was, you know, the last day of the month. And then I wanted to get out what I colored in the month of March video out. In the morning, I had to draw the winner of the Sun Life Drawing World of Animals giveaway. So got that one out. And then because the winner of my 1,000 subscriber giveaway had not contacted me yet and still hasn't. I put out a special short video because there's no way I can get a hold of her. Um, so I just put out a short video telling her she has till tonight to get a hold of me. Um, otherwise, unfortunately, she is going to forfeit her gift, which again like i said in there would would make me sad she was the winner fair and square and you know i've never run into this problem before hey we can start to maybe see what it's going to be huh it's giving us an idea i love these colors together i'm having a suspicion that might be like some sky maybe maybe Okay, 19's over here. So yeah, those are the two or four, I should say, videos that I got together and out yesterday. So I am not going to be recording too much longer. It is almost quarter after nine now. So, how many 19s do we have to go? Yep, I think I'm just going to finish 19s here quick. And then I shall say adios for now. And get this into my editor. And hopefully get it created and then uploaded to YouTube eventually. I mean, it probably won't be till this afternoon because all the processes, just to copy it from my phone to my computer takes a while. And then getting the movie all joined together in my software takes a while. And then saving it takes a while. And then uploading it takes a while. <laughs> so yeah, it will take number of hours yet to get this up to YouTube but I do want it up today yet so so I at least have something to put up for today not sure if I will be having something for every day this week I do have one made for those of you who were interested in the oil painting color by number giveaway I did make that video I'm not sure if that's going up today or tomorrow I believe I mentioned 
in one of my videos that I put out yesterday that it was going to be up today though now that I think about it so here's a peach that I forgot oh yeah I was gonna put this marker on the side to see if I have a refill for that um, so yeah I guess after thinking about it I will put that video up to date too so then I'm all out of videos. I have no videos in reserve. And I want to complete this color in chat. Maybe tonight. I'll have to see um, what else I have going on. If I'm going to even feel like recording tonight after the kids leave. I don't know. Um... And I know as soon as I hear Bella start barking that that means that Heather is here with the kids. So that's why I want to get this part done before she starts going off the rails. And I know Heather's here. Because I would like to get this put away before Maddie gets here and into stuff. She spied my... I put all my markers away from my long, long color and chat, but there, I had so much out on my desk because I used so many different coloring mediums in that picture. And so I put them away to an extent, I guess not real well. And that little bugger still found them. She didn't do anything with them though. She just came in the other room and she showed them to me. And uh, so she didn't, you know, like try to take the caps off or do anything. So she didn't, she didn't wreck them or anything. So all it was good in that regard. So this part of the picture is almost done keep checking my iPad over there to make sure it's still recording although that is not a real good indicator of not running into problems because typically it says it's recording and I believe it is but then something just happens to the file so yes I am going to be trying out this new method of mine um, with trying to stop the video and uh you know anywhere between a half hour and 45 minutes we can tell now what it is and so oh i love how the sky is looking i think that is so pretty looks like a lighthouse huh i do think so all righty i can't wait to see what the rest of it if there's going to be greens and stuff in through here um or what well maybe because the lighthouse is way up there we'd have water rather than grass or maybe some water and then grass i don't know we shall find out um but i'm going to leave it here for now we have another 40 minutes here um to the second part that i recorded so this will be over in our color and chat which is a good length so um i will continue on this possibly tonight, if not tomorrow morning. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little color and chat and hearing about my sick little pupper dog who is on the mend though. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you are new to my channel. Hope everyone has a great Monday. Boo. <laughs> and as always, happy coloring. Bye.